have really come a long way. Actually, I got into genetics after my pediatric training in 1982. At that time, all we knew was just a few chromosomal disorders like Down syndrome. That's all the tests which were available and we were going and identifying these children and these children were not brought out into the open, into the society. They were kind of hidden. So we, we used to see 10 year old, 12 year old down, down syndrome children who were you know really having a lot of problems with their everyday activities and parents were scared to bring them out or were ashamed to bring them out. But now the times have changed so much that instead of making a test and diagnosis in the child, we are making a diagnosis even before the child is born, the baby is born. So we've really come a long way over these few years and we are able to offer so many tests and help in the prevention of these genetic disorders because genetic disorders does not have any cure, majority of them. We can only do a prevention. So it's very important for us to identify these genetic disorders in a family and especially if they are mentally challenged or if they have a neurological problem and so it's very difficult for the parents to bring up the ch these children and they're very very scared to have another child of similar condition. So they keep on terminating their pregnancies and when they become pregnant and uh, then they uh, delay their uh, you know the next child also. So now it's so much more better that we have so many technological advances as with the IT boom we also have a neurobiological revolution with the IT. So we have these new techniques like next generation sequencing, exam sequencing, all these with that we can identify any gene which is abnormal, which is you know quoted. Already there is a human genome project in the world which is already established and it is available freely on the net. So with that as a reference human genome, uh, you know, the, all these genes which are abnormal, we can do using these new technologies, like I said, next generation sequencing, we can easily identify these mutations in a family. And once we identify this, we can offer this as a prenatal test. That means before the baby is born, during her pregnancy, we can offer at three months or fourth month and then we can tell them whether their fetus is having the same condition or it is normal, which is such a big thing for the parents. And also even if we, they do not want to have another child, we can tell them what exactly, supposing it just is under a label, muscular dystrophy, mental retardation, just cerebral palsy. These are just a label, but we do not know why exactly it is caused. Is it the same as everything else? So using this new test, we can really do uh, pinpoint exactly where it has gone wrong, where the genes have gone wrong, whether it is genetic or whether it is just an environmental factor, whether something else went wrong and it is not going to happen. And with that, we can tell them what is the future going to be, whether this child, what complications this child can have and whether we can offer any, like supposing any skeletal abnormalities in future is going to happen, whether there's going to be eye abnormalities or in the kidneys. So we can predict that and we can do a surveillance. So we can tell the parents every year you have to come and get this baby checked up for the heart for any other particular system which is involved in that particular genetic disorder so we explain to the parents first of all what happens is we have to make a diagnosis and find out whether it's a genetic disorder or not and this is a clinical and we take a detailed family history up to about three generations of the pedigree and find out whether any other member is affected with just that family history, we will know whether what kind of an inheritance it is, whether it is a recessive disorder where the parents will be normal, but they'll still be carrying a gene mutation. Or it's a dominant condition where one of the parents will also have that condition and passing on to the, their child. It's a 50% chance. Or it is only X link, that is where only the male children will be affected, 50% of the males will be affected. So once looking at this history itself, we can make out that. And once we know that, we'll do the appropriate genetic test, depending on which system it is involved. I'm very happy to say that right now, we are almost on par with the global facilities. In fact, we are cheaper than the Western uh, you know, labs which are doing these tests. So they are three times the cost of it, but using the same high-tech equipment, 
there are several labs, very good labs and people have come back from the western countries and have set up these labs and they, we are able to provide these new technologies to our patients and find out the uh, gene uh, genetic disorders and pinpoint the exact mutations uh, in our country also. So in fact, you know what is happening is many of the countries just like how the other Walmart and all everybody wants to get into our country because they see a big market. So we are a huge population and they know that it is just opening up. So there are several labs which are in the US based or they want to come back to India and set up a lab along with our people over here and you know offer these services because there is a big market and there is a need for these genetic testing to be done in our country. The, this is the most important thing in these genetic disorders because one is we do not study so much of genetic medicine in during our MBBS curriculum. So we are not aware of you know what tests and what conditions they are. So when the patients come to us, we they tell us something but we do not really uh, you know check the child and so supposing they say this child is not doing well and we do not bother or if we see, feel that there is no treatment for this, we say yeah that is all you know. So we leave it but it is very crucial for us to investigate the child or the person who is affected because this will help in the management, further management also in prevention like I said prenatal testing. So there is no point in you know keeping quiet and when the lady becomes pregnant and then she starts getting worried oh what will happen then for us to do these tests is very difficult because it takes a long time at least sometimes it takes up to 3 to 4 months for us to do get one result of these tests and so we have to send it outside like the cities or elsewhere and so it takes time for us and once we get that report only then we can offer the test for the mother. We have the same genetic disorders in our country and some of the mutations are also the same which are well known mutations causing that and what we call it is a phenotype genotype correlation. But sometimes when we do not get those same uh, abnormalities or the mutations, we say that okay this is not there but the condition is there in front of us, the patient is having the clinical condition but we are not able to get the same mutation which is reported in the western literature. So we should be very well aware that we have a definite, def, definitely different ethnic population. So our mutations may be completely different from the western mutation. So we really need to be very careful when we are doing reporting or we are interpreting these results. So again it is very very important for us to do have our own database, very important that the government should step in now with the private labs and help in you know doing a complete database for all our different ethnic variations like for example some communities are very uh, having specific genetic disorders like the thalassemias and all that. So they have the northeastern, they are the Mediterranean diseases. So we know that that population has its own kind of mutations whereas South India they, we do not have that much of that. So it is very important for us to have a complete database of our genetic uh, you know uh, sequencing done and have our own and then use that as a reference. I think so that then we will call it personalized medicine so that because each person will have a different kind of you know you and me are completely different. So I may not react to the drug as the way you react so it is by then I, we are all hoping that one day it will be that we will all have chips on our foreheads or, or at the wrist and we just scan it just like how we scan and our complete genomic imprint comes out and we will say okay I can take uh, safely prescribe this drug, I can pre safely do this kind of a uh, you know treatment is what is going to be called the personalized medicine and especially in cancer. Yes I am sure uh, they will be holding and they should be holding with the kind of research which is going on so that it becomes a very personalized kind of medicine which is uh, specific for each person. Like you may not react to the same medicine as the way I react. So we have kind of a chip or something like that where it uh, once you scan you get the whole uh, you know genomic imprint of my part particular uh, way and then we are treated like that. So I think uh, and more than that with this information therapies cures for genetic disorders which should be uh, you know found discovered and given to the people.